everybody, Caleb here, and today I've got this Guild F50. This is a 1972 Guild F50. Um, it's It plays right now, and it sounds really good, but the action is really high the higher up the frets you get. Um, you can maybe tell there's not much saddle left. I'm thinking we might be in neck reset territory. As I've been looking at this neck, it's almost like it's got cracks along both sides of the heel. So I wonder if it hasn't moved. Um, that's entirely likely. Other than that, this thing's just kind of dusty. To use a little bit of cleaning up. Not a whole lot to it. Um, it's actually in really good shape, but despite being a little bit dusty. Um, the back seems fairly flat, so I don't really think that's our neck angle issue. Um... I think the only thing we can really do is uh, set her down and start taking a look at it. So let's go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll go on from there. So I just kind of wanted to show this a little bit closer if I could, and I may zoom in just a little bit more. Uh, while we still got tension on this, I kind of want to look at this neck angle, or the neck joint. Um, it looks like there's just starting to separate there, so I'm wondering if this hasn't moved. Um, that would be a good indication that it has moved, is if this has actually started to, you know, crack and come apart. The other side looks about the same. Actually, on camera, the other side looks even worse. Uh, you can see that nice dark line all the way up there. I'm trying to get this to focus right. So yeah, this nice dark line right there along the neck joint. That makes me think that maybe this has started to come loose, or maybe even somebody else has taken it loose at some point. Um, that should be advantageous if we do have to take the neck out of this, and I'm kind of thinking that's where we're going to be going with this. Um, we'll take a look at the actual body real quick. So the two angles I want to check here, or the two uh, lines I want to check here, are uh, neck angle based off of this and you can see that runs into there runs flat into there that should sit sitting on the fretboard uh, on the frets where it's at it should sit like at least you know about an eighth inch above the bridge it should ideally be where it sits when it runs into it that's really not good uh, the other thing to check would be for belly bulge and actually it's not totally flat, but it is better than 90%. So that leads me to believing that we don't have an internal bracing issue. We have a neck angle issue, an actual neck angle issue. Um, the only other thing to check real quick would be to see if the uh, bridge is lifting. So let me grab some thin piece of paper I can put under there to try and check. So we just kind of run this along here, use the uh, the edge, see if we can get underneath the bridge anywhere. And it sure doesn't look like it. So that bridge looks well adhered. Even the edges are stuck down well. I would almost say this bridge has been restuck. Um, there is a little bit of a, uh, a haze around it. And there's a few spots that, I don't know, maybe it hasn't, but... It is very well stuck at this point, so I don't think we have any actual bridge issues. I think all of our issues lie in the neck joint. So, I guess I'm going to pull the strings off of here. And we're going to start looking at making sure that it's the neck joint. Because the last thing I want to do is pull the neck unnecessarily. I don't want to go pulling necks left and right. It's not the easiest thing. It's definitely not the cheapest option. So I want to make sure that's what I got to do before I go doing it. I also wanted to absolutely confirm the string action is high. I don't even have to measure it. It's high. You can see there, there's a big gap at the, uh, at the 12th fret. It's too high. Um, and there's just no saddle left. You can see definitely there. There's virtually none to get over there any lower and we're going to have the strings coming straight across the saddle which is not what we want it's going to leave buzzing 
Um, we need more saddle and less height. So something's got to change. Just getting to taking all this stuff apart now. Um, it is very, very dusty. Like, I don't know how well you can see this, but if I do that, uh, yeah, there you can see the dust. It's very dusty. It definitely needs cleaned up. And I could tell that on the fretboard even while I was getting ready to get started here. The, uh, the strings aren't terrible, but there's definitely some brown spots. So I'm going to go ahead and end up replacing those. side. I shouldn't need those pins for a little while. I think you can see in that hole, it's a little bit dirty. We're going to do some cleaning up here. The tuners work great. I'm really glad to see that. Wasn't quite as low as I thought I was. I'm actually getting a good look at these frets now. There's a couple of grooves in them. We could probably uh, level them and recrown them. It could probably do that. Wouldn't be a bad thing. All right. Very dusty. That's better. I've just noticed there is a crack in the fingerboard right here. Uh, I think you can catch it there. Um, that worries me a little bit because typically we get cracks in the fingerboard once it starts to get dry. And once it starts to get dry, it gets really brittle. And if I'm going to have to unstick this section and it's going to be really brittle, that's going to be uh, not a lot of fun. I think what I'm going to try to do uh, before I unstick this is maybe put some tape on each side and put a little bit of CA glue down in there and there to uh, just stabilize it. Uh, wood glue won't do me a whole lot of good because if I'm going to have to heat this up, it's just going to soften that glue again. Okay, there's the saddle. There is not a lot of saddle left there. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside as well. We can look at this thing with no string tension now. That side's not straight. Yeah. Runs right into it. Gonna have to do something about that neck angle. And I'm thinking it's gonna be here. I'm gonna feel inside a little bit to make sure there's no loose braces, but uh I think that's just going to be the way it's going to be. I felt around on the inside and I didn't really notice anything strange, but I'm starting to look around in here. Um, this reinforcement, sound hole reinforcement that runs like this, the flat brace, it's got some kind of stamp on it. I really can't read what it says though. It's so faded. Um, then there's like uh, some kind of writing on both sides of the uh, X brace because the X brace runs about like this. There's some writing here and there's some writing here. Looks like uh, I would have almost said permanent marker, but I don't think so. It's a bunch of numbers. I do not know what they are and I cannot legibly read them. 
But the reason I got the mirror out was I wanted to look at the uh, the bridge plate and make sure it was good. And it is. It's a piece of maple, probably. I think so, yeah. The interesting thing is there's two little holes on each side of the... Uh, the uh, saddle that go all the way through the bridge plate almost like this was ready for a pickup and never got one and they're really tiny tiny like pinholes but they are in there since I'm in here and looking for this stuff I may as well look on the other side and see what else I can find okay there is some some kind of reinforcement that runs across here. It's not uh, wood. It's more like the fabric strips you'd find reinforcing sides or covering up the x brace join, which is kind of strange. And then there's more scribbled writing. Uh, that one looks like pen, and I can't make any legible sense out of that um, if I remember I'll try to put some pictures in here of some of this stuff as I'm talking about it but I would kind of guess that this has been open then um, it doesn't really feel like the binding's been off of it but unless somebody was writing on it from through the sound hole which it makes sense why I can't read it. There's a lot of writing going on in there. But nothing seems loose, extraordinarily. So I'm fairly certain we're going to have to pull this neck off of here. And to do that, we're going to have to loosen the fretboard extension. And before we do that, I want to fill this crack. So I've got a little bit of super glue out. And I've also got some... Uh, some ebony dust that I'm going to try to get in to that crack as well to kind of cover it up the best I can. I've got the tape down to try to prevent as much mess as I can. Inevitably, the CA glue is going to do stuff you don't want it to. But all we can do is try and prevent it to the best of our ability. All right, that's probably as good as that's going to get. I'm going to just spritz that with some accelerator. I use that card that I was using to kind of cover up. I don't spray more than I need or on anything else. And that should be good. That should kind of stabilize that crack. And with a little bit of scraping, it should be looking as good as new. Obviously right now it's very ugly. But I think... As soon as we just do this, that's going to 
clean that right up. It's better. And I'm a little less worried about uh, that crack as I start to put some pressure on here. I've started putting some heat on here. Um, I've got some tape on to help uh, keep me from scratching up any of the finish. But uh, I'm just starting to put some heat. It's about 430 degrees, my uh, block. So it shouldn't take too long. So we start uh, softening the glue and start working the tool in. I already noticed it's a, uh, the extension, the corner, the, at least this corner, was already loose. So I'm hoping this won't take a whole lot of coercement to get it coming off of here. I can tell that binding is soft. So I gotta be careful about that. I don't want to break too much. I'm just gonna real carefully unstick this whole edge. Wait, right, start working more towards the middle. looking good. Put the heat back on there in the middle this time. Start heating that up good and trying to soften that glue. Alright, that's had a little bit of a time. So we can start working this in here. I'm trying to keep the, uh, the tool basically flat on the top so I'm not prying up or down, just left or right. See how much further that slid in there. That's warm. This is not exactly the fastest thing I do, but it's going fairly easily in uh, reference to other ones I've done. I'm starting to inch my way a little bit closer to the, uh, the side you're on, the treble side. I started basically on the base side, the side that I'm closest to, so I can start working the tool in and then I'll kind of just inch my way over. where I put this hand. I don't want to stick it on any uh, 400 degree frets. Would not be one of my better ideas. So I've got this fretboard extension as unstuck as I think I'm going to get it. Um, I probably could have done what I'm about to do before I started unsticking it but it works fine this way. I've got it clamped down so everything is kind of solid and doesn't move. Uh, I need to pull this fret, the one right after the body join, so I have access to the uh, to the actual neck joint once I put a couple of tiny little holes underneath where that fret goes. 
So I'm going to use a really sharp blade to kind of clean out right where that fret joins the fretboard and also to kind of score the wood so that if we get any tear out, it stops underneath the fret. That should be pretty good. I may just do a dab of water to soften it up. Uh, I want to make sure that I, I want to try to pull this out as cleanly as I can. And if I can soften the wood fibers up just a little bit to help me, then it's worth doing. And then I also want to try and save this fret. So I have to be fairly careful here. That's coming right out of there. So that's looking really good. Um, I have a few chips. I just need to kind of clean that up. Most of it, actually all of it, is underneath the fret. So the fret will cover up any, any little bit of damage we have there. Um, that's good. And that fret is still in a good condition. So should we should be able to save that and put it back in. So... We get that fret pulled out of there, and then what I need to do is I need to put two little holes on each side of the joint to help me get steam into the actual neck joint. So I've got the smallest bit I can use. This is a 5 64ths drill bit, and I'm just going to very carefully drill two holes. This is where having it kind of clamped up is nice because everything is solid. I'm going to try to drill two tiny holes underneath the fret that knock me that drop into the uh, neck joint Ooh, that's less than optimal all right so that we're getting yeah this board is a little like I was scared it's brittle so I'm going to get some super glue out and try and stabilize everything that's there before we go on. Right. That's just a little bit more.
All right, that should have helped get that a little more solid. Um, I would rather have a little bit of a mess of super glue on top of just the board than have tons of chips floating around. Um, I can always scrape this back. Uh, finding loose chips is significantly more difficult. Not the best hole, but drilling blind doesn't always offer that. I do think we've hit some glue. I think I'm pulling some up. It's like uh, kind of rubbery. The other thing I want to do is make sure I get those holes cleaned out so I can actually get my steam in there. Um, which I think we're just about ready to start trying. Um, I haven't even gotten close to starting to set up the steaming stuff. So it's going to take a little while to build up some steam and get the jig on here and everything, but that'll be probably the next thing we do. Um, ooh, that shakes. Don't do that. Yeah, so I'll get set up to start steaming this neck off of here. It'll uh, get the jig on here. It'll put some pressure on it. On it, and uh, yeah, that's what we'll do next. All right, um, I've got this all set up to start steaming this neck off. I hope this is going to go well. I've uh, already let the steam build up while I was putting the jig on. So we should have some steam ready. 